I made a video a little over a year ago about GitHub Copilot and it was called, Please Don't Use GitHub Copilot. So this video I'm making today is intended to be a follow-up from that video. The first video I made, which I'll link in the description, had a good bit of criticism and concern that I made and people did not particularly like it. It was one of my most downvoted videos, I think, ever. I get that some people didn't like my opinions on the matter, but I really did have some real concerns, and as we found out over the last 14 months, I was actually right about a couple of the major concerns, which are now confirmed. I had several concerns, and my first video is a good overview of those concerns, but the two concerns that I wanted to focus in on for this video was the dependency on GitHub Copilot and the potential for it to cost money. I really wanted to try out GitHub Copilot first before I made my first video, but it took so long to get into the technical preview that I wasn't able to actually tested. In the last 14 months, I was finally sent the invitation I was supposed to get. I did try it out, and honestly, I was pretty underwhelmed. I didn't particularly care for it. The first thing I want to focus in on is the dependency of the tool. This has always been more or less my primary concern, because with any tool, if you start getting really good at it and it starts being an integral part of your workflow and your development, then it's something that you end up relying on a great deal. And this is no different than any other product to include like Stack Overflow, any editor you've ever used, or any piece of open source software that you've used for your development, whether it's databases or other tools. I figured this would be a tool that would degrade code quality a good deal and make people write things that they didn't actually know how it worked and just kind of have the hyper-integrated version of Stack Overflow producing their code for them. And I thought this was a very bad idea. It was not going to make people better programmers. And for telling people these opinions in my last video, I got called a lot of things. I called a dinosaur. I got told that I was afraid to lose my job due to a AI you know, co-pilot, co-companion, and that I was just afraid of the future and what the technology would hold. And longtime viewers of this channel know that I love new technology. I am all about it. I am not that old, and I am definitely not a dinosaur when it comes to, you know, staying up to date with the technology and using the greatest tools that are available at the time. I was also concerned that people would get dependent on a tool that might eventually cost money. And at the time of my first video, I thought they would, I think even said this in the video, I said they're probably going to have a free tier that is limited and they're going to try to get you into a paying tier so they can get a monthly fee for that. And then they would definitely have a business tier and they would make all organizations and businesses uh, pay for this product. And this really did seem like the most likely case, just given what I know from GitHub, especially since Microsoft acquired them. Since Microsoft acquired them, they don't really have any products that cost money other than those that are related to business and organizations. Before Microsoft acquired GitHub, they did have a number of paid offerings, one of which was private repos. I think they ditched that largely because they were competing with Bitbucket, who had already offered private repos for the longest time. I definitely never thought that it would be totally free for everyone, just given the nature of what it is. It is an AI-powered thing. There is a lot of resources that go into that, and they do have an ongoing cost and consumption of resources every time somebody uses the Copilot service and it goes up to their servers and does the analysis so i get that it does cost money and they need to make money to sustain that about three or four months ago i got a pretty surprising email and this is where github finally threw down the gauntlet and they said we are making everybody pay for github copilot the purpose of the email was to tell me that i had 30 days to upgrade my account or they would cut me off from the service not that this mattered because i wasn't using it anyway i was kind of surprised they made this a fully paid product that didn't make a ton of sense to me just knowing how github typically operates and when I made my first video and I looked at their FAQ it wasn't entirely clear what they're gonna do they weren't saying it one way or another and that brings me to my next point I think they did that specifically because if they came out and said this is going to be a paid product for everybody I don't think anybody would have used it including myself because there's a lot of products that come out where they're paid products and I instantly don't want to try them or use them just because I'm not going to pay for them. So I thought it was a little bit sneaky to get a whole year worth of free testing from people under the possibility that they might have a free tier for this product. And then they just yanked the rug out from everybody about two months ago, or maybe it was three or four months ago, and make everybody pay for this product, in which I don't think a ton of people are going to pay for it. Part of what I didn't like about this either is in that one year period, there are probably people who got dependent on GitHub Copilot, some people who were actually getting some benefit from it. And now that they're enjoying it, it works really well for them. GitHub's like, 
Time to pay us 10 bucks a month now. Part of what was interesting and intriguing about Copilot to begin with is the fact that it might have been free because it was backed by a very large company. Since it's not free, that means that you have to consider the competitors now. There are competitors out there that are doing what Copilot is doing for both paid and free. And so why is it so special now? What it boils down to for me is that it is a hard pass for GitHub Copilot. I've tried it, I don't particularly like it, and the fact that they are gonna make me pay for it means that I absolutely don't want anything to do with it and I would never recommend it to anybody. And for those watching, I would advise the exact same. Definitely don't use Copilot now, especially after the way they conducted this rollout over the last 14 months. And if you really, really feel like you want some smart auto completion there are some other options out there that are both paid and free. So check those out if you wish. And that's it for this video. Thanks a lot for watching. Please let me know below in the comments what you think about GitHub Copilot. Have you been using it? Do you think it's bad? Do you think it's good? Is what I'm saying wrong or right? Let me know all those things in the comments. Thanks a lot for watching. I really appreciate it. Take care.